I'm all about brewing better beer, and if I can make some processes easier on myself, that's a win-win. While some tools are more for fun and not totally necessary, others have a major impact on how I brew. Today I'm going to show you a few of my favorite brewing related tools and the many ways that I use them in my home brewery. Does everybody know what time it is? Tool time! I'm Trent Musho and this is The Brew Show. It's tool time. The gear on today's list are by no means required, but they each bring something to the brewery and make brewing a little more easy and fun. I hope you pick up a few tricks and ideas along the way. I'll have all the items I discuss linked in the description for easy reference. Also, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments, what's one tool you love and have to have in your brewery? Now, let's get into it with the first tool. Number one, infrared thermometer. You may have seen me use this in a few videos, and I love it so much I actually have two, one for the brewery and one for the kitchen. This thermometer reads infrared heat using a lens on the front, and depending on where you point it, the thermometer reads the temp of the object almost instantly. It works great for surface level temperatures, but not so much for internal temperatures. So I use it all the time on brew day and beyond. If I want a quick reading of the water or mash temp, just pull the trigger, get a quick reading, and you get it there on a digital screen. You can easily change from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and it even has a laser pointer to help you know where you're pointing. Now it isn't a perfect or exactly precise tool, but it gives you a pretty close reading of the surface temp, all within a fraction of a second. Another example of using it is during fermentation. I can quickly take a reading without having to sanitize the thermometer. Plus, you can't deny the endless fun you'd have with the laser pointer alone. Number two, Kettle Quick Disconnects. This one was an early upgrade I made, and it's made my brew days so much easier. If you've ever brewed all grain, you know one of the biggest problems with brewing larger batches is moving large amounts of liquid around. Having to connect tubing and disconnect tubing and moving things around can be really annoying. So when I discovered these quick disconnects, I was sold. One end connects to a port on your kettle or mash tun, and the other connects to the tubing of choice. Then all you have to do is, there's a male side and a female side, and they slide together. <laughs> Sorry. Then to release, you just pull on this collar and it disconnects and they come in a bunch of different sizes and variations, so get whatever works for your system. Whether you're connecting a pump or just doing a gravity transfer into a fermenter, it's a breeze. And there's something satisfying about making the connection. I could do that all day. Number three, bottling wand. A bottling wand might be one of the most underrated brewing tools. The way it works is that there's a long, hard tubing and a spring-activated valve at the bottom. And as you press down on the valve, it opens and allows liquid to flow through. Then as soon as you release the valve, it instantly stops thanks to the spring. And lastly, as you pull the wand out, it leaves the perfect amount of headspace in the bottle. No more pinching the line or trying to stop the siphon, it makes bottling easy. But did you also know it fits perfectly into a picnic tap? So you can easily fill up growlers or bottles to go. It can also fit into some spigots on fermenters, but if not, you can just cut a bit of tubing to fit over the spigot. You can just slide it in and fill the bottles up straight from the fermenter. Additionally, you can take quick tastings or refractometer samples. Just flip the bottling wand upside down, then using your thumb on the spring valve, lower the opposite end in and press the valve and release. It will capture the liquid inside. Shout out to doing the most for this one, a great tip I use often. I'm sure there's other great uses for this little tool. If you don't have one, consider picking one up. Number four, hand twist hose clamps. Sometimes it's the simple things that can make life better. For anyone that kegs, you know the importance of a solid hose clamp. With all the pressure for carbonating and pushing your beer around, a loose clamp will send beer or even CO2 all over. So you usually need to find a screwdriver and hopefully you find the right one to fit your hose clamp and tighten it down. And heaven forbid you use those permanent pinch on hose clamps and need to change tubing. It's a pain. But when I found these hose clamps you can hand tighten, I bought them immediately. I think you get the idea here. You can hand tighten or loosen these hose clamps. No need to get the screwdriver or specialized tool. When you need to add one on, whether you're transferring from a fermenter or changing out lines, just reach for a pack of these and thank me later. I always hated hose clamps, and maybe someday I'll switch to duo tight fittings. But until that day, these hand twist clamps are amazing. Number five, floating dip tube. I recently got this one and I've been loving the results. Instead of having a stiff tube in your keg that pulls from the bottom where a lot of the sediment and yeast fall out to, you can use a floating dip tube to pull from the top of your keg, which means you get clearer beer faster. Essentially, you take out the original dip tube and replace it with a line of flexible tubing that has a floating ball on one end. The ball floats to the top of the beer, and as you drink, it just stays at the top, pulling that clear beer. 
Now, if you make a ton of hoppy beers, you can run into some clogging issues with floater hops on top. So they sell filters to help with that. I was initially intimidated by installing it, but it really was quite simple. Just keep your regular dip tube around in case you want to switch back at any point. A floating dip tube doesn't make for better beer, but it just means I can get to drinking the best looking beer faster. Number six, carbonation caps. There are a ton of ways to bottle beer from a keg. Some are on the more expensive range, but these carbonation caps are really affordable and they have many uses besides just filling up bottles. One downside is that you need to use screw top bottles with this, which means you can buy PET beer bottles or in a pinch, just use whatever reusable twist top bottle you have on hand. The way it works is that on the top is a universal ball lock post, similar to the ones on kegs, except this one can take either gas or liquid disconnects. And on the bottom is a barbed hose port that you can put tubing on. First, you need to cut some tubing to the length of your bottle and attach it to the cap. Then you can screw it onto the bottle. Now you can add CO2 to purge the bottle and then attach a jumper cable from your keg to pressure transfer in. I showed this process in my gifting homebrew video if you want to see more. But that's not all this is great for. You can also use this to dose a keg or pressurized vessel with an extract, tincture, or fining agent like Biofine. You just add your ingredient to the bottle, cap it, and then add more pressure than whatever vessel you're adding it to. Then using a jumper cable, you can pressure transfer the ingredient in. As long as you purge the bottle in lines with CO2, it's a great oxygen-free way to dose your keg. Number seven, stainless pressurized growler. This one is entirely not necessary, but I found it to be extremely useful and a lot of fun. Where glass growlers are great for day of drinking, they don't really allow for the beer to last very long once opened. All that oxygen and loss of carbonation really shorten its life. But these stainless pressurized growlers have changed the game. I have a Growler Works U keg and I find myself using it all the time. These mini kegs use small CO2 cartridges. And on top there's a regulator that releases the pressure and near the bottom is a gauge that reads your pressure. And since they can be pressurized, that means you can just pull on the tap and let it flow. If you purge a growler with CO2 beforehand, you essentially have a way to store your beer for a very long time. It's a great way to bring a beer on a long road trip or to a party. And you can be sure that people will definitely be excited about it. Who doesn't like to pull the tap on a keg? I recently also found another way to use these mini kegs. I ran out of CO2, but had a small batch of beer ready to be packaged. So I thought, why not just keg it up and carve in this? And it worked. Granted, it took me two of the little CO2 carts to get full pressure, but the beer has carbonation. So for all you small batch brewers that are still bottling, this could be a really good jumping off point to get you into kegging without the hassle of a big kegerator. There's a few different brands that make these, as well as a few different sizes that they make. And while the cost is a bit high compared to the other items on this list, it's definitely well worth the price tag. As you can see, not every tool is necessary, but some certainly do make brewing more enjoyable. Anything that can make life easier, I'm here for it. If you have any of these tools or other tools that you recommend, be sure to let me know. Or hop over to the Discord server where you can share some pics of your favorite gear or share tips and tricks with other brewers. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like on your way out. Happy brewing and cheers!